Hi, we're here today talking with Paul Bingham, our VP and Dean of Cybersecurity Programs at the College of IT. Welcome, Paul. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Yeah, it's so great to have you. So before we dive into the wonderful world of cybersecurity at the College of IT, I'd like to ask you a question about you. Um, you had a whole career before WGU in the FBI, 24 years. Can you tell us, you know, what was what was memorable about that career? I mean, can you can you give us a tidbit? Sure, and I don't have to kill you. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> even better. Yeah, <laughs> I think um, I would start with what was most rewarding with it, because I have all kinds of memories, as you might imagine, mm -hmm. from 24 years. Yeah. What was most rewarding to me, I would say, was contributing to a mission that was all about protecting the innocence of people and and the freedoms of our country as well as defending those who had somehow been victimized by something bad happening in their lives and i think to go from what was most rewarding to sometimes what was most enjoyable mm -hmm. would have been uh, for 15 of those years i was uh, part of or a leader of the fbi's tactical teams and so the esprit de corps and the camaraderie with those teams and some of the adventures and memories really were great. Oh yeah, I bet there were adventures aplenty. There were. We could spend a whole, I think, <laughs> two hours on that. But what then, so then, so you have this amazing career with the FBI. Um, what, what kind of prompted you to get involved with education? What was, what was your, what was your motivation there? Sure, so one of the opportunities I had at the FBI was to teach uh, across the U.S. and internationally, mostly law enforcement or prosecutors on uh, investigating and prosecuting cybercrime as well as various white collar crimes. And it really just, uh, I enjoyed it. I got to where I was developing my own curriculum for 40 hour long courses and it, it told me hey, you really like this stuff, you might want to might want to look into this someday. I would say just as part of that, just sort of that moment as, as an instructor of seeing the lights turn on where somebody says, oh, this is really useful stuff, yeah. and then has the opportunity to convert, to change some of their behavior for good, to adopt yeah. something that you've just taught them is just so exciting. Oh, yeah. And, and you bring from that experience so much to, WGU, uh, let's let's dive into cybersecurity. I mean, we've all heard about cybersecurity. It sounds like tremendously fascinating, and we know that it's it's it, at the same time it is this national, this global threat. You know, what is? Can you sort of tell us a little bit about what cybersecurity is and what the scope of cybersecurity study is in the WGU programs? Sure, I can. Um, cybersecurity, you're right, is this. People usually, oh, cybersecurity, oh, you're a hacker or you're a pen tester. Yeah. And yes, that's part of it, but it really starts with even the supply chain and saying, how do we securely provision products that are going to go into uh, our network or our home? And then designing policies and procedures to whether it's passwords, whether it's uh, access, uh, devices on how to essentially prevent bad things from happening all the way to sure incident response oh my goodness ransomware just hit us what are we going to do how do we respond to it and so it, it's the entirety of all of that for which there are careers and for which we prepare all of our students to fill in fact i would say we hear a lot in the news about cybersecurity incidents what we don't hear about are all of the thwarted attacks because of great policies, great procedures, great provisioning of people doing their job and keeping us safe. So it's a part of it is a world that's very public and there's a large element of that world that we never hear about because the profession yes, because <laughs> the professionals are doing their jobs. Yeah, that's awesome. And what can you talk about the jobs a little bit like you, you, you know, obviously we think about the military has their cyber force and big companies have big cyber um, armies almost that, that they employ. But is, are those the types of jobs our students are going out and getting? Where, where do they work after they, after they leave us? The, the whole gamut of uh, large government um, contractors that serve the government, large corporations, but everybody, even down to our homes, 
has a need for some element of cybersecurity. So either they're working for some of these large institutions or they're working for incrementally smaller organizations. The smaller the organization, generally the wider the scope of cybersecurity mm -hmm. uh, practice that they're engaging in. And really, Marnie, you and I are involved in cybersecurity because when we don't click on that email that has the cute kitty video in it, uh, we're practicing cybersecurity and contributing to the integrity of our network. That's right, as everyone should. Yes. Be alert. <laughs> Be alert for those phishing emails. That's, you know, so interesting. And we hear all the time about the gaps in employment for our students, or for, excuse me, nationally and globally. Mm. Um, so I'm sure this is like, it's such an incredible opportunity for our students to go through these programs and, and get to work. Do they generally work in cybersecurity before they come to us or, or, or do they come fresh out of other fields and then? It's a mix really. Uh, a lot of new students come in because of great media exposure, because of, as you said, massive jobs that are available in the industry at all levels of the cybersecurity sort of life cycle. Those who are already in cybersecurity generally come to us because they're looking for uh, management or promotion opportunities. Yeah. I've got the skills, but I don't mm -hmm. have the degree, and I need the degree to get to that next level. We often say, because we integrate, as you know, industry certifications into a lot of our programs, yeah. we like to sort of oversimplify, but say certifications get you a job, degrees get you a career. Yeah, and that's so true. Um, you've recently had an incredible honor with this National Center of um, Academic Excellence in Cybersecurity designation. You know, it sounds amazing, and I know that it is amazing, but can you tell us what that is and why that's so important? Sure. It's unique because it's the United States government, in essence, um, validating a program of study at independent or private institutions. That's very unique. And in this case, our Bachelor's in Cybersecurity and Information Assurance program was validated, meaning that a very careful scrutiny of our curriculum, of our faculty, mm. of uh, the types of assessments that we employ, and how those match up with a predefined set of knowledge units that the National Security Agency puts forth to, to determine whether or not a program is adequately preparing students mm to help protect our nation's infrastructure is really what it's all yeah. about. Yeah. And uh, one of those requirements was that the program of study be in existence for at least three years. So okay. our bachelor's in cybersecurity and information Assist assurance just had its fourth birthday last June. Uh, so part of this, by design, when the program was first initiated, by design, it was designed right. to meet these requirements. And then we just had to prove that it was effective, which of course, we really easily did. You did, this. in short order, in yeah. very short order. And, and how many students are in that program? Just over 8,000. Amazing. So it's bigger than a lot of small colleges out there. Yeah. Comprehensive colleges. Yep. I've heard a lot about, you know, you have this national designation of excellence, these amazing programs, this is serious, serious business um, for, for us at WGU and for the country, but I've heard a lot about the fun that you all have in the cybersecurity um, world as well, and the kind of uh, community building that you're nurturing across your students that I think is really pretty unique at WGU and very powerful. Can you tell us about your cybersecurity club? Sure, and proudly. Uh, almost two years ago, Mike Morris, who was our program chair at the time, said, I think we should have a club. At traditional universities, students can meet in the Commons building, get together. Uh, those who are of age might go out and have a beer together, have study groups. We should offer that opportunity for our students. And so he went about, together with other faculty members, setting up this club. I remember the first meeting waiting for the hour to arrive when the meeting was going to start and wondering among ourselves, are we going to have six people or 60 people here? We had no idea. Yeah. And yet it was like 300 students showed up wow. for the first meeting. And it has grown ever since then. Students really love getting together. And uh, it's a student-run organization. Once a year they hold elections to elect club officers. The officers uh, find speakers for their monthly meetings. 
and they're, they're bringing in national level talent uh, by their own accord. Uh, I'm also pleased to say that they also focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. For example, one of the featured speakers at one of the monthly meetings was a man known as Joe B, who also is known as the blind hacker, and oh, is, a, wow. is a very well-renowned uh, white hat or ethical hacker who's blind. Uh, they also meet with our Women in Tech Club from time to time, having joint club meetings. Mm -hmm. and. Um, just they have study groups they have, it's it's been wildly successful oh it's amazing so so how does it work like where where does the club meet is it in teams or like how do they how do they manage their community so it's on the internet oh. <laughs> <laughs> we we actually are uh, are exploring a lot of options uh, because we have a, a forum on Koros, on the on the WGU knowledge base, mm -hmm. that doesn't quite meet all of our needs, and so we've expanded over into Teams. We use WebEx events for the actual meetings mm -hmm. monthly, uh, and the team or the club also has a Discord channel where they get together and meet for some of their uh, group team hacking exercises and oh. preparation for those events. Very cool. And is it so? Is it then primarily student run, and these events are primarily student run, or do you have? Does this take a percentage of like your staff time as well? So we have uh, primarily two faculty members who are faculty advisors to the club, but the lion's share of the planning and the activities are are done truly by the student leaders and uh, other club members. And that's that's just amazing. And you showed me your calendar earlier and it was just full of events and activities and all of that is organic to students and how they want to see their community grow. I think that's just incredibly, incredibly powerful. Even something we never would have imagined, Marnie, karaoke Fridays. Oh my gosh. Online karaoke. <laughs> If you know someone who might be part of a band, say, <laughs> who'd like to partake in it, we could find a way for them to join. I actually think that that someone might be interested in joining, but only if you join her and sing a duet. <laughs> All right, we might be able to work it out. That's amazing. And it really happens every Friday? It's every Friday. That's wonderful. I love that. I, I really have to, to log in for, for, for that because that is really, really cool. The other really cool thing that you're doing, and that we heard, we've heard a little about a bit about in, in other forums, is your your partnership and the work that you're doing with the cyber.org on the on K through 12 education and supporting uh, faculty and schools on that front. Um, the work that, that they're doing in that space is tremendous, and it's really cool that you're a part of it. What's what's the commitment um, to K through 12? So that was a partnership that piqued our interest because they're, uh, they're a nonprofit, primarily government-funded organization, uh, which provides curriculum and training to faculty in the K-12 community, as well as, the, well, I said it before, the curriculum for students to, to learn basic cybersecurity skills as well as, as they prepare or as they promote through the different grades to prepare for potential careers in cybersecurity. And they especially want to ensure that access is granted to underrepresented populations. Mm. And so we saw a natural fit there as well as their curriculum helps prepare students for some of the certifications that we integrate into our degree programs. Mm. So we saw natural on-ramps from their curriculum into our programs. Uh, we think partly as we talked a little earlier about protecting the national infrastructure and each of us plays a part in that by not clicking on cute kitty videos. <laughs> um, that is part of the same effort that we're doing with, with training students in the K through 12 uh, grades. Um, one of the instances where we partnered with them successfully last summer was in a first ever WGU virtual cyber camp for youth in New York City. This was last July, and we had 31 students, high school students from the New York City area who participated. We used cyber.org who, who supplied the curriculum, and we used WGU faculty who volunteered their time for a week to help teach these students uh, two hours a day. And I'm pleased to say that uh, about 25% of the participants were females, and 95% of the participants 
were from underrepresented populations. Wow, that is that's really cool. Um, do you think, like, as as kind of this education pushes down into secondary school, middle school, do you think we're going to see more of those young people coming right out of high school and going to work in the cyber fields? Do you think there'll be an impact also on kind of what you're doing in undergraduate and graduate education that comes from sort of changing the ecosystem in this way? I think we're already seeing the interest in that from students coming out of high school who have already decided, I want a career in cybersecurity. They have some practical expertise, hopefully not through hacking the grades at their high school. Mm -hmm. but, um, <laughs> but we are already seeing that. And we've seen evidence of students who, for example, have graduated, been wildly successful in our programs, and thanks to the competency-based, go-at-your-own-pace model, mm -hmm. have finished our, our programs within, say, one to two terms, wow. which is astounding. Uh, yeah. uh, a couple of us spoke recently to a recent graduate who is 18 years old, working for a national cybersecurity firm in Texas, and is just building his first house because of the salary that he's earning from that job. Wow. <laughs> that's that... a lot different from what I was doing when I was 18. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but that's amazing. And to, to think about that kind of fast track pathway to opportunity and a quality of life that would have been difficult probably for that individual to get to any other route. That's just incredible. You must feel amazing about that. It's fantastic. Yeah, and all the work that you're doing, Paul, and the team's doing in the College of IT and in the cybersecurity programs, it's just, it's not only high quality and it's not only like so creative and so mission aligned, but you're doing it at scale. Um, and and you have to be like, um, you have to just be feeling great about that when you go home at night. It's true. Uh, I didn't mention it earlier, but I mentioned my, the most rewarding aspect of my work with the FBI was contributing to a mission that had a noble cause. Mm -hmm. And really that's what attracted me to WGU, was there is nobility in the mission of improving lives through increasing access to education. And in this case, education that contributes to preserving the freedoms and the infrastructure of our country. Absolutely. So it just checks all the boxes. You haven't changed jobs at all. I don't think I have. No. <laughs> it's been so great to talk with you. Thank Thanks. you so much for being here with Thanks us today. Thanks for the invitation. The Provost Update is your opportunity to share good news happening across the academic organization. Let us know when you or someone you work with has been involved with something exciting and noteworthy. Reach out to us with your news and story ideas at academicnews at wgu.edu. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.